It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States. Uncertainty, anxiety, fear. The Cuban Missile Crisis would go on to be one of the United States' greatest tests of strength. Two nations, divided in economic principle and foreign backing, would go on to test each other's patience in the most dangerous way possible. Tensions were through the roof with the United States and the Soviet Union both having their fingers on the trigger. After the end of World War II, the two countries would drag each other into a conflict that would later become known as the Cold War. This hostile conflict would take place in many different locations across the world, eventually finding its way to the small island of Cuba. What ends up taking place arguably stands as the climax of the Cold War, causing the relationship between the United States and its communist enemies to never be the same again. This begs the question, how did two countries, so close in proximity with each other, manage to move so far away from a peaceful relationship? The year is 1962. The United States had just wrapped up one of the most successful decades in recent memory. The economic boost from World War II served as a major stepping stone in the country's climb out from the pit that was the Great Depression. The momentum of the 1950s carried on to the 1960s, and the United States had finally returned to the economic status of the pre-depression days. That said, 90 miles away from the Floridian coastline, an alliance capable of compromising the safety of American citizens had began to form. Cuban dictator Fidel Castro and Soviet Union leader Nikita Khrushchev had struck a deal that involved the transfer of ballistic missiles from the Soviet Union to the island of Cuba. For Castro, this alliance proved to be crucial for the economic status of Cuba, as Soviet Union officials promised to continue providing funds to bolster the Cuban economy. For Khrushchev, the Soviet Union gained territory that put them at an unprecedented advantage in regards to the Cold War. For the most part, these exchanges were clandestine to the American government officials. It wasn't until October 14, 1962, that a United States aircraft captured a photo of what seemed to be a Soviet Union missile site in Cuba. When news of this discovery reached the United States, the nation's initial reaction was that of deep fear and uncertainty. On October 22, 1962, John F. Kennedy addressed the nation amidst this troubling time. I have directed that the following initial steps be taken immediately. First, to halt this offensive buildup, a strict quarantine on all offensive military equipment under shipment to Cuba is being initiated. All ships of any kind bound for Cuba, from whatever nation or port, will if found to contain cargoes of offensive weapons be turned back. After this virtual blockade had been implemented, the two countries continued to be immersed in this global conflict. However, Kennedy would eventually receive a message from Khrushchev, stating that the Soviet Union did not want to engage in a nuclear war with the U.S. Then, on October 27, 1962, a U.S. military plane flying over Cuba was shot out of the sky. What seemed to be a glimmer of hope in all of this had literally been shot down. The crisis had reached its most dire stage. Millions of American, Cuban, and Soviet citizens stood in front of the television screen, biting their nails as they watched men in suits determine the fate of their lives. 
All it took was for one man, one man in a position of power to give the go-ahead, and just like that, the lives of innocent citizens would have been destroyed. Things could not have gotten any more hopeless. Kennedy received this message and began communicating with the Soviets in hopes to find a compromise. The two countries agreed that if the U.S. were to cancel its plans to commandeer Cuba, then the Soviet Union would remove its ballistic missiles from the island. Furthermore, in order to satisfy an additional request made by the Soviets, the U.S. would remove its ballistic missiles from Turkey. Then, on October 28, 1962, the Soviets would officially announce their decision to remove the ballistic missiles in Cuba. What could have ended up as a nuclear disaster turned out to be arguably one of the closest calls in world history. The Cuban Missile Crisis would result in one of the most significant compromises in U.S. history, because in the midst of bitter foreign relations, the U.S. was able to establish a temporary truce with the Soviet Union, preventing a certain nuclear catastrophe that the whole world would have undoubtedly suffered.